Okay, they're closing the doors, so we're gonna get going. All right. So you are here to hear me talk about tribes today. It's about creating sustainable micro communities in Drupal. So thank you very much for coming. If you're not in the right place, please sit down anyway. I'm looking at you. I'm just kidding. All right, so who am I? And uh, we'll just skip that slide, because who cares? <laughs> Hang on. All right, so I am Shannon. Hi, I work at Acquia. Before I came to work at Acquia, I did quite a bit of work in the Drupal 8 community, starting uh, right, right after DrupalCon Chicago, I think. And um, I was helping to coordinate some of the initiatives, give them some roadmap advice, and just generally be a happy helper uh, in the project management realm, and how can I help them organize that. And I learned a lot through that experience. And I've been involved in community ever since. And so I decided to do the session today because I felt like there's a lot there now. We've come a really long way when it comes to helping developers get involved. We've made leaps and bounds in the past you know, five, six years since I was doing some of that. But I'm still seeing a lot of help needed for other areas. How do we bring in more skill sets? How do we bring in different types of people? How do we bring in people more globally into the community and create tribes? Um, and talk about it a little bit more what it is. But that's just a little bit of background about me and why I'm here talking to you today. I want to inspire your ideas. I want us to have some conversation after I talk about this. I want to hear what you think. And I want you to take these ideas and bring them into the community and really try and execute on some of these concepts. So what are we going to talk about today? First, we're going to have a bit of retrospective discussion. What do we know? What have we learned? Um, what takeaways can we sort of draw from? And to get that information, I talked to a lot of different people in the community and just generally kind of got consensus in my own experiences and just what do we know? We're going to talk a little bit about how to grow tribes and what are tribes. What's the difference between like a tribe and a group or an initiative? Like I can answer questions about that at the end, but I want to tell you kind of what a tribe is. And then we want to talk about metrics. So if we are doing this right, how do we know we're doing it right? What should we be looking for? What's a success story sound like? What should we be watching to see if we're actually growing these groups in the right way? And then finally, some takeaways. I've got some uh, tips and tricks and ideas for you to think about. It's going to be on one slide. So that's our agenda for today. And let's get right into it. So a few thoughts. Retrospectively speaking, I wanted to do what's called a flap. Um, I know, it's fun, fun acronym. Uh, it means um, future considerations, uh, lessons learned, accomplishments, and problem areas. So future considerations. Something I'm hearing a lot is that we're going to really need to focus on contribution instead of something like sprint day or let's go work on this initiative like dev situation, like I want us to really change our verbiage and I've heard this from a few people in the community. Other communities are doing it, let's contribute, let's not focus on a sprint because sometimes sprint doesn't sound super inviting to people in UX or UI or whatever. They're like, oh yeah, they're gonna go develop. I guess I'll just go over here and go away forever. So let's not do that. Another thing that we can think about um, is trying to focus on better onboarding tools. So a lot of communities have documentation, they have a lot of other things that we don't yet for these other groups, for these more diverse groups, and we need to work on that. I also think that we need to work on empowering our leadership. This is something I've heard a lot just ever since day one in working in D8. I felt like people felt really frustrated, the ones who were in leadership roles couldn't execute because they were kind of stuck. They're like, oh, well, I can do all these things, but I can't because now 25 people have just come into my channel and said all these things, and now I have to respond to each and every one of them. We're going to iterate forever on this thing, even though we're halfway through development, and now we have to stop and discuss again. It's a big hurdle for them, so I think future concepts need to really take into account how do we manage leadership and how do we empower leadership to be decision makers, or at the very least, decision leaders, where they can drive a decision and stop the debate at some point in the process. Another thing in terms of lessons learned that we were able to draw was the fact that we had a real diversity problem. I already talked about this. 99% of you are like developers in this community. 
that's a problem for us. We need to think about that. How is it affecting our development? We shouldn't just be having a group of developers in a room talking about a problem, which is basically what Sprint Day was and has been historically. Now we have a few UX people like Boyan and others who are getting involved, and that's great, but they are still far too few. So I feel like this is something that we need to really own and understand. We also have communication problem. I'm just gonna call out the elephant in the room. Drupal.org is not super friendly for non-developers. Filing issues that are visual in nature, that are interactive in nature, that are dependent on other things, issues that need to be discussed as a whole, like this is not a great forum. So communication is kind of a problem, I think, anyway, and I've heard that from other people. We need to do more mentorship. I know, Kathy, you've done a lot in this realm. Thank you very much, but we need to do more of it. There needs to be a lot more involvement, and especially, I'm going to call myself out, people like me who really care about this and want to see it move forward, we can step up and sort of lead this charge. It's hard to do, but like we need to be having a way to do it. So that's what I hope to talk about in a little bit. Let's talk about some accomplishments. Um, scheduled releases, that's been going pretty good for us. I think it might be because we plan stuff. Hey, <laughs> crazy idea. You planned a release and then it happened. Oh my God. Um, so I think that's pretty good. I think we should do more of that. By the way, that probably involves some project management types. Uh, we've been raising awareness around the fact that we need to do more of that stuff. Um, that whole initiative movement thing that started, I know it was really painful at first, but I think it's been really successful for us in raising awareness that we can't just develop like we have been. We need to actually think about building teams, building tribes around these ideas and initiatives that we care about. So they're supported. And I will get into the why in just a second. And finally, the security team. I think they're doing an awesome job. We all just shouted that out <laughs> during the keynote. How great were they? How awesome uh, was that information? It was because they had many people from many different backgrounds and many different places all caring about a topic and all really staying involved and staying in touch. They had really strong communication. They had really strong leadership. They had really strong directive. That is a strong tribe. So let's talk about some things that are not going so well. Onboarding and offboarding. Really, really hard to get started. There are barriers around what do you know? What should you know? What have you already done? What do you need to learn? Oh my God, this is really hard. Um, not just for developers, like for everyone. Project managers and UI people and creative people, right now when they come to our community, they're like, where do I even go? Like, there's nowhere really for me to even look to start to think about contributing or what is my role in this community as a non-developer? Like, that just does not exist. We need to think about that. Offboarding is also an issue, by the way, because when someone wants to leave, it's like, mic drop. <laughs> I'm done now. I did my thing. I'm done. That's a problem for the community. We need much better handoff opportunities and means to actually document and follow up on what someone is saying. I have to put this down now. Who's going to pick it up? So offboarding and onboarding, both issues. Work-life balance. This kind of, for me, goes hand in hand with the onboarding, offboarding thing. You work super hard just to figure all this stuff out, and then you get an idea and you work on something and you feel really, really driven, and because it's hard to develop the community to come and help you, you're on your own. You're killing yourself, and then when you do, are just finally like, oh, God, I can't do this anymore, there is no way to just hand it off to somebody easily. A lot of core developers, a lot of core contributors feel this way, not just in development but other things too. It's like really overwhelming. You're trying to just figure this out and help, and you can't. Um, and then you can't just walk away. Your whole life kind of implodes. You're like, all right, I have to stop this now. Um, so a lot of... Uh, pressure on those people, which could be alleviated by the final thing I think we're not doing so good, which is funding. And the slide just advanced, sorry. So funding needs work, and we can also think about how do we fund things so that people can be sustainable and can be long-term and can have work-life balance, focusing on Drupal and core development without having to walk away from their lives or their day job. So let's talk about some conclusions. When we're talking about this stuff, there's a lot of things that I feel we can learn, but I want to focus on a few. First one being onboarding and mentorship. I think it's really important that we lower that barrier. Let's make it easy for people to understand what they can do. This is not a simple solution, but it is an important one. And I think it needs a lot of work right now. 
Um, we also need to think about the on-ramps of people. What, what do we have today? We don't really have a lot of these. We have some tutorials, but they're getting out of date really fast. We need to work on that. We need more mentors, more docs. Basically, we need to lower those barriers. Another one is scheduling. I really liked um, those scheduling examples that I called out. I think that we need to plan more things. I think that's working for us, and we should try and do more of that. There was a roadmap for change. Yeah, there was. <laughs> and we even have a roadmap to fall back on. Um, Communication-wise, we need to work on how we coordinate with remote teams. This is just going to be a thing. We're living with this. We're bathing in it. Let's and really embrace it. Figure out how do we work well with these remote teams? How do we coordinate better? What communication tools can we develop that are going to be accessible for everybody and better for everybody? And the work-life balance thing. I think this is the other core issue. If you're going to contribute, it kind of becomes like your life after a while. If you're maintaining something, you are responsible for it. And how many people are dependent on you, just you? This is not a healthy thing. I think we need to work on fixing that. And we need to specifically think about when you have an idea, you don't just go do it anymore. You go find yourself a bunch of friends who all care about that idea. And you communicate, 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 and you build this community around what you're trying to do so that you can effectively assign work, work with people. I think that needs to be a real early phase development for this concept. And I think the answer to this is really with tribes. So let's talk about what is a tribe exactly. I don't mean um, that it's you know Indians and Aborigines and all of these things. I'm definitely not talking about that. I am talking about a vision that is clearly expressed that the people in your tribe adhere to and understand. I am talking about leadership techniques. How do you find those people? How do you nurture their, their skills? And how do you really get them excited about what you're doing? Keep them having that positive experience and wanting to come back for more. And then church, teach them to go out and find other people. And how do you communicate? What are the methods that you're using to do those two things? How can you optimize that? How can you improve that so that it grows that tribe? They all know where to go. Oh, I need to do something. I know just where to go. Oh, I need to find someone. I know just where to go. I know just how to get my message out that I'm looking for people or looking for things to do. These communication tools are going to be key to our success in growing these groups. So some examples of successful tribes, sports, for example. If you're a sports fan, you probably know where to go. Music is another good one. And I think Drupal needs to be another good one, where we're really looking for how do we build these communities up and how do we teach them how to build themselves. So out of this, if this is done well, I think that we're going to see, first of all, better deliveries, because stop advancing. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, but we're going to see better communities come out of it because the teams will have more diverse groups working on this. Yep, I know. I've got to turn off the uh, automatic transition. I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. Now it's going to work. So if we get better shipments out of this, I think it's going to be because the groups are more diverse. You'll have UX people advising you. You'll have PM people helping to plan. You'll have communicators out there broadcasting your message. This is stuff, historically, that most development teams don't enjoy or want to do, but it's immensely helpful in growing your team so you're not the only one doing it. I think we'll also see lots of opportunities to improve onboarding and training, and that, in turn, will grow your community because it'll be easier for people to get involved. If they know how to start, they're not so scared to start, I think. So you'll have more people and more hands to onboard. After that, we'll see improved coordination, obviously, because people will be talking to each other more, and they'll be interested in thinking proactively instead of reactively. So I think that we'll see a much better coordination. And finally, I think the, the tribal mentality is just a really positive thing, and it's something that culturally Drupal needs and something that we all need when we're working on these projects. We need to feel like life is great. I'm excited to see these people. I'm excited to work on this project. I think we really need a lot more of that. And when people are feeling that way about your project, guess what? They stick around. That's a problem, too. In this community, someone starts working on something, and they get really excited about it for a little bit, and they work really, really hard, and they're like, oh, I have to stop. I have to go away. And so this is something that will keep them there, that tribal mentality, that feeling of we're all in this together, we're all excited about this, we're all working on it. 
but I'm not by myself and I can go on vacation without dying and having this drop off the face of the planet because there's someone to pick up what I'm doing and we're going to rotate in. So that's my theory and we can talk more about that. But first I want to really say, what am I asking of you, the community? Um, mostly I want you to focus on better culture, communication and coaching. So communication wise, I think it means that we should be looking how, at how do I get my team to say, I get it, I'm on board with your vision, they understand that, and I can find someone to help me, and I know how to get started working on this, and then finally, I know what's next, I know what's coming, so that if I want to try something else, I can, or I can stop if I need to. Communication-wise, these should be just table stakes. I think that we should also have the ability to make a sort of kit out of this. So what does this kit include? I think it should be an elevator pitch for your thing or your concept or whatever it is. We should be able to really describe that in a minute or less. That way people can actually jump on. You don't have to be like, well, I'm going to do this thing and it's going to be really complex and really neat and I'm going to take 25 minutes to explain it to you and you're not going to understand 10 words of it until the very end where I'm like, well, basically it's this thing. Work on your pitch so that people can actually want to get involved. You're going to want to have on and off mentors, people to get you started, people to help you walk away. I think these two things are really key because especially that last one, you're on your own in a lot of these cases, but right now I don't think anybody's talking about offboarding anyone at all. How do you walk away from something? Well, you drop it on the ground and you go away forever. That's not great. We need to work on that. So the kit should include some guidelines. If you want to start, if you want to stop, here's the person who helps you or here's the people who help you. We should have innovation process. That to me is very table stakes. If you want to change something, there should be some kind of guideline within your tribe to say, hey, this is how we want your feedback. Maybe there's a feedback section. Maybe there's a person you talk to. Maybe there's an issue queue. Maybe there's whatever. I don't know. You guys decide, but you should make that clearer because for people like me who are non-technical, man, it's really hard to give feedback. I want to give feedback. I'm like, mm, I don't even know where to go. Forget it. So the community is going to stall until we figure that out. And finally, we need better planning tools. And I've got a couple of examples and a couple of ideas that we could use to grow that. So this is my concept around communication and what we need. After that, um, I'd like to just call out a couple of examples where this has worked. So the first one was with Chris Vanderwater. I was having a chat with him. You know, what did you think worked well for you? And he said, well, I started out with like this idea and you know that was great for blocks and layouts, and I really wanted to do it. And then Emily came along, and she had this vision. It wasn't just an idea. It wasn't just a proof of concept. She explained how it was valuable. She put it in clear terms, really simple for people to just hop on and understand where her train of thought was going. I'm like, OK, cool. That totally supports my concept. <laughs> so um, basically, uh, it's really key to tribal nature and tribal growth. And in Seth Godin's book called Tribes, he talks about it a little bit. He says, you want to tell a story, obviously, that people can get easily. What's the problem? How are you solving it? Tell them a nice story. Then you want to create a connection to the people in your tribe. How would, would you solve this problem? Or how would you like to help me? Or you know, what can you bring to the table? What skill sets have you today? Make that personal for them. And then finally, you want to have a very low barrier to get started. Oh, OK, you're interested in this. Hmm. Here's something super easy. It will take you about an hour or a day or whatever time frame is most effective for your group. Uh, give them something to work with and make it easy. So that's kind of how this worked for, um, for Chris and that team. They found some things that were smaller that people could get started on. And they also had some very, very big complex things that not everyone could do. <laughs> but uh, I think this is a really effective way. And I think that that um, process outlined in tribes is a good one. In addition to that, I feel like, and I talk about this all the time, I don't know if you've heard any of my talks, but this is a recurring theme, rocket ships. It's uh, the tool that is used by Multilingual from, from Gabor. I love this tool still. It's been around for a couple of years. I'm still like, this is awesome. This is why. First thing, you have this big thing when you arrive. It is the story. It talks about why multilingual is important and what do you need, and you can get more information about how to contact them and whatever, but at least this tells you kind of what's going on. Then, hey, I'm interested in this. Who do I talk to? Find yourself a mentor. It's right there. 
Meet the team. Those are your mentors. Those are the people that you can talk to. How easy is this? And then finally, you have contribute. It doesn't even say develop or like issues or whatever. It says contribute. I love it. It's so nice. So you can contribute right there. All right, I found somebody, blah, 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 blah. He said, check out this issue. I go right over to that issue. It's got a schmancy thing. It pulls from D.O, issue Q. It's really well done. By the way, this can be abstracted and used for any project. Just ask Ebor for the code. He'll probably send it to you. It's in Git, I assume. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's a D.O project now. Let's see, I'm way behind the times. Thank you, Kathy. So there's stuff that you can use. It's already out there. Very effective tool. He's grown that community super well thanks to tools like this. This is my vision. This is how you can contact us. This is how you get started. It's really simple. This is not rocket science. What's that? It's a rocket ship. It is. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about culture because we all know that we've had some cultural issues in the past. Um, so I just want to take a moment and talk about how we want these tribes to feel. What should they be thinking? First of all, they should feel welcome. In Joe Schindler's uh, keynote last year in Vienna, he did a whole spiel on this. It's much better than this. So if you want more information, check that out. But I like this. I should feel good. I should feel welcome. I should have a positive first interaction. He talks a lot about this, and I totally agree. My first interaction in the community was with Angie. And I was like, oh, can I help? She was like, this is great. I love that you want to help. This is awesome. OK, let's go figure this out. I wish everyone had that kind of welcome into their community contribution like mode, because I was like, oh my gosh, she's like happy that I'm here. Wouldn't you go back to somebody who was like, yay, welcome, rather than, oh, crap, now I have to find something for you to do. <sighs> like, that's not the same welcome. It's not the same vision, right? So I think this is really important. They should also feel valued. Uh, everyone can bring some knowledge to the table. I don't care how like untalented you are and experienced or whatever. You know stuff. You've experienced stuff. You should feel like you're making a difference and that you're not the only one working on this if you're working in a tribe. That's what I mean by piece of the puzzle. You should feel like you are one piece of a big picture. Um, so this is really important to me that this feeling demonstrates a strong tribe and a, a positive tribe. So what's in the kit? Um, I think we need ramp up plans, a very welcome, a very warm welcome, uh, good ways to get started. We need the right um, contribution sort of recognition. This is extremely hard to do right now for non-developers, by the way. I think the, the recognition that I got was like a call out from Dries in his Dries note, which was awesome. <laughs> but still, like we should have ways to say, our project management team smashed this by doing blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, we're so grateful to our UXers who just de designed this brand new thing for blocks and layouts or however it is or whatever it is. We should be able to call them out easily, quickly, just like we do with development. We should have more role clarity. We should be able to say, this is your space where you're useful and valuable so that we can make those recognitions where necessary. And then finally, we should have ramp down plans. You should be able to walk away or stop doing something without creating a big hole in that project and thusly feeling really guilty when you stop doing that. It's really hard to feel good about your tribe and good about your contribution if you stop and then all of a sudden everyone's like, oh crap, you just screwed us. Like, that's really, <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good feeling. So culturally, I think these are the things that we need to really adopt in order to be successful in driving this sort of positive tribal culture. And I mentioned Joe as a, an example, and I'm going to just call it out again. So something he said was, everyone has something to share. This actually echoes Dries', Dries note from today, ironically. It wasn't planned. It just happened that way. And um, I think this, this is absolutely right, and this should be sort of the example that we look to when we say, how do we make someone feel special? How do we make someone feel valued? Recognizing their contribution, whatever it is, and recognizing, let's open our hearts and minds a bit and say, I know this is a really complex technical thing, but this UX person or this creative person, whoever it is, who's really interested in getting involved, or even this business person who just cares about the topic and maybe wants to share an opinion, they can bring me something. Let's not be so closed off to that. I feel like right now, a lot of conversations that I had previously were very centered around how do I build this, not how well do I build this. And I think that that's a distinction we need to really think about. 
So that's what I mean by everyone has something to share. Be open to it. And then this happened this morning as well. <laughs> we need better documentation. We need a process for defining these things and for supporting these things outside of just development. How do UXers, UIers, creatives, PMs, business owners, product owners, how do they approach us today? How do they get involved? What can we bring to them? What can they bring to us? So these are things that I think we also need more docs around. And then let's talk a little bit about contribution. There's a lot of ways that we can say thank you to our contributors. It doesn't just have to be a pat on the back. You could do a blog post, you could tell a DA, hey, this person pushed this thing forward so much, can we do a spotlight on them? Um, you could do Git tip if that's their thing, or if they have other tools for funding their work. Or you could also just help them find more help. What a great thank you that is, for real. I like your work so much, it means so much to me. I'm gonna go rally the troops and get you a whole slew of people. That to someone is like, I would feel super grateful if someone did that for me, if they pushed my concept forward, if they pushed the work that I was trying to lead or whatever forward by helping me get help. That's a big deal. So I think that's my favorite one, by the way. And finally, being able to breathe. I think that this is a biggie that we haven't solved. You should be able to go away and want to come back. I think that this is a transient sort of community in a lot of ways. We're all here a lot. We're, we stick around in the community for years and years and years, but we don't always contribute in that long-term way. I think that's an issue. I think we should be able to step up to the plate, knock it out of the park, hand off our bat, and then go sit in the dugout until we're ready to come back. It's okay. And people naturally need to do that because not everyone is contributing full time. So how do we make this possible for people to take a breath, live life? I think this is really tough right now because of the aforementioned barriers. So if we can knock those down, I think that we'll see a lot more of this. I think we'll see people coming, contributing, walking away, coming back, walking away again, coming back again. That's all right. I think that that's the nature of the beast. And I think we have to embrace it and we have to prepare for it. So the way that we do that, some ideas that we can consider. Um, I think we need to have more teams. I think we need to have alternates on teams. Maybe you have a PM, but maybe you have an alternate PM who once every two months shows up just to be like, what's going on? Maybe the same for other development roles. Maybe you're not always working on something critical, but you're rotating out. You could be working on something critical one month and then documenting it the next and then working on something non-critical the month after that. Give someone else a critical chance. Don't always have the same people working all the same critical stuff. That's a single point of failure that puts a lot of pressure on them. Spread out the love a little bit. Grow the knowledge base a little bit. And then finally, expand those contribution skill sets here. That's, that's a really good one because if you are the lone developer working on something, you have to figure out your UI, you have to figure out your UX, you have to figure out all these other things. If you're a team, it frees up everyone's mind to focus on their skill sets, on where they really shine, and what they really care about. So I think that's a real big positive. They'll feel better about it, but they'll also not be responsible for all the things, which is a huge positive for our engineers, I think. So uh, let's talk about the third one, coaching. I think this is how do we get there. We talked a little bit about what do we need. I think this is a little bit of the way forward. Um, if you're being coached effectively in a tribe, you'll feel like that help was constructive. This goes back to culture a little bit, but it's important to have that sort of coaching mentality and not the you're doing it wrong mentality. That's really painful for someone to hear. Um, we also want to encourage people to feel good about giving feedback. This is a community meant to iterate. When you're in those issue queues, there's tons of comments. Some of them nice, some of them not nice. But I think that we can all be constructive and we should shoot for a positive environment for people who are coming in and seeing that. And they should also feel like they're empowered to help others. If you learn something, you should feel okay sharing that knowledge. Maybe it's through documentation or maybe it's through mentorship, but I think we shouldn't be so afraid of assigning mentorship to just anyone who learned a thing. But that's just my opinion. 
So what's in this coaching kit? I think that we need, oh no. It, I, I accidentally pasted over it. So in the coaching realm, we need stronger um, mentorship tools. So a mentorship guide would be really good. Uh, maybe three key questions that you could ask someone to teach them how to be a good mentor. Or a uh, sort of shadowing opportunity when a mentor is working with someone else and they just learn something. Here's how I mentored someone else into learning this. Let's have you watch me teach someone else what you just learned, and then you can go and do that. Shadowing is really good for that. Having constructive tools, and I'm going to go through a few of those tools right now that you can use to encourage criticism in a positive way in those groups, encourage constructive conversation and debate. And finally, you can work on just having the tools to tell someone when they're not doing good coaching. So calling out someone in private when they're not doing it right is really good and really important. Calling them out in public when they are doing things right, setting that example for everyone is a really positive thing that I think is really important to have in that toolkit. I'll fix this slide and later add those little icons, but that's what I think needs to be in there. So talking about that, I think some of you have seen this slide from Angie. It is her quadrant of awesomeness where she talks about how in the upper right-hand corner are people who are super skilled and super awesome to work with and create really strong tribes, and that's who we want. And sometimes we get dragons who are super skilled and not very nice to work with. And the people in the bottom right, we just don't want because they're not very good and they're not very nice. And then the upper sort of left corner is where we have the mentoring opportunity. And this is where I see us putting the most effort around our tribal growth is right there. Because it's people who need to have a little bit of work done at growing their skills, but they're awesome. And they have the right mentality. That's who we want to work with. I mean, the people in the right top should be working with the people on the left top. And that's how we're going to have strong coaching mentality between the tribal members. In the book that I was reading recently called Radical Candor, there's a similar uh, sort of graph here. And what its author, Kim Scott, what she suggests is that you should care personally and approach directly. And I really love this concept because when you care personally about someone, you're not going to be a jerk to them, usually. <laughs> if you know the people on your tribe and you care about what they're trying to do and you care about them as a person, you're much less likely to be a jerk. So that's really important. Also challenging directly, when you disagree with someone and you can back up your argument with facts or examples or ideas that are not just, oh, well, I don't like your thing. Um, that's really helpful. So challenging directly and, uh, and approaching someone in a, you know, not telling so-and-so, their idea is terrible, don't work with it. If you tell someone, I think this is better, you can actually have a debate, you can have a discussion. And that's a really positive tribal community approach, which is really effective in the Drupal open source community. So I touched on debate and decide a little bit, but I just want to expand on that. One problem that we have in this community when we're trying to have these discussions is that we focus a lot of our time on that debate. <laughs> and in the issue cues, I know it's, it's a tool where you can kind of see that never ending. Um, I think that we need to really separate those two things. There's debating, there's ideation, there's options, there's um, discussions on those options and their viability and their pros and cons and uh, all sorts of issues around them. And that's very important. But, big but, leadership needs to be able to say, stop. The time has come for a decision. We have enough information. And there's no formula for knowing when that's going to happen. Leadership needs to be empowered to make that decision. Maybe they don't make the decision in the end about what is decided, but they need to be able to say, stop. We decide now. And then the decision process continues. Maybe it's like a vote or maybe it's a committee or however they decide to do it. But I think this is one area where in open source development, we are lacking clear delimiters and clear moments where we're like, OK, enough. Deciding now. And then debate stops. And you work on delivering whatever was decided. And then if someone wants to raise an issue and I disagree with that, we need to no, no, no. then you're like, OK open an issue or open a forum to discuss and debate why you think that and make sure it's not the one that we just had. And then we can move forward. If you have a different idea or you want to iterate on what we just did, 
great, let's do that. But let's not reopen the whole debate. Let's not rehash this whole thing all the time. That's painful. And I think we need to just segregate the two things. Are you deciding? Are you debating? Maybe that means that you have sub initiatives or goals and impacts discussions and you're working on constraints and methods, but they are not the same as talking about topics or architecture. Like you need to decide how you're approaching this. So debating and deciding, an issue. Um, a third thing that I think culturally will really help us move in this coaching mentality is by making people really comfortable with feedback. Good feedback, positive and negative comments delivered in a respectful way. So you could have a chart like this, which maybe you run through for each iteration or each sprint or whatever you're doing, um, that says that for these people, we're going to get from, give to, and encourage between as leadership within your tribe, you're picking out people who you are trying to get to do these things. Give praise to, get criticism from. Now you can start this in your own groups. You can have this little chart for who you want to encourage within your tribe to work on these positive aspects of criticism. And I think that that's an important step in us really accepting that we need to foster that and not just arguing. So those are a few uh, coaching things. And I think we also need to talk about the elephant in the room. We have a lot of people who are remote in this community. How do we deal with that? We have time zone issues. We have language issues. We have culture issues. We have technology issues around the communication that are all going to screw that up, for lack of a better word. There's no perfect formula for that. But I think that regular check-ins really help. If you want to develop a personal relationship with a remote person, you check in on a regular basis, because it's only then that you can sort of identify, oh, they're talking differently this week, or oh, they sound really tired, or oh, they're saying this really negatively, and blah, blah, blah. Maybe you pick out some things that you didn't realize before, but you will only see those nuances in that person if you really set up the communication. If you're just talking to them once a month, it's going to be really hard to pick up when they're not doing so good, I think. So communication, often, regular, in person when you can, in video, next, in phone, after that, email, text, whatever, last. Which I think is the opposite of what we're doing today, ironically. A lot of us just communicate through issue cues or through IRC or through chat or whatever it is. That's the last form, the lowest form of connecting personally with remote people. We should really be focusing much more on telephone um, or video chat as much as we can with those groups because it really creates that connection, helps you care personally, so you can challenge directly in the right way. So I think often um, you should be checking in with your teams. We should also have a lot more focus on making it a habit and getting insights about the person as a person and not just the project that they're working on. Get to know them. Do they have a family? Do they have a dog? Whatever. <laughs> What's their situation? It makes it a lot easier to create that bond and then to keep them involved and to know that you care. In addition to that, I think it's good to try and find out more about what they're interested in. Just like in career development, any good leader wants to focus on where their person that they're focused on in their team wants to go to. Because think about it, if you're working with someone on a project and you know that later they want to do, I don't know, product management or project management or something like that, that's your career aspiration, and you can help them there, they're going to come back again and again. They're going to be like, I'm learning stuff. This is pushing my career. I'm going to put this on my resume or I'm going to show this result or whatever. This is amazing for the community. This is how you grow those other groups. This is how you keep them around. Stimulate their career growth. Give them something to shoot for. So you have to understand where do they want to go. And to do that, you have to talk to them about it. I think we're not doing that at all. I think we're saying, OK, you want to do this thing? All right, here's an issue. Go do it. How does that stimulate someone's mind to say, I'm going to stay around and do this forever? It doesn't really. Um, and then finally, you have to be really good at recognizing them for what they are doing and what they are bringing. It, in remote teams, this is super hard to do, but I'm gonna give you some examples of how we do it in my team. Um, so my bosses have sent us books. They've sent us uh, thank you sort of presents. Like one last year we all got capes because we were kind of doing some amazing stuff in really short timelines and we pulled it off and they sent us all capes. I thought that was kind of funny. You don't have to do that, but I think that sending um, a card is a great way to tell a remote person, oh my gosh, what you do is so impactful. No one does that anymore. And I think it's super physical to like have the tangible thing and be like, wow, they went to the post office and they just sent me this card. 
When I got a card from Acquia on my birthday, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so sweet. So I think that stuff like that doesn't have to cost a ton of money or take a lot of time, but it does get felt. And I think that that's the important thing. So that's what I think about um, remote cultures. And there's a lot more that I could say on this, tons and tons, but I'm just keeping it to bare bones. So if you want to know this, there's been previous sessions about it. I'm sure there will be future sessions. Remote teams is a thing that we really need to do better at managing. Okay, now I've given you a bunch of ideas. And I want to talk a little bit about how do we know if this is working? What are the metrics that I think we should be watching to see if we're doing tribal community the right way? Um, so the first one is tribal stages. And this was in the book, um, Tribal Leadership. Shoot, I forgot his name now. I'll, I'll try and put it in the slides. So there are different levels of tribal, uh, I guess, success. And the bottom one is called life sucks, where the person's just really unhappy. Their entire thing about life is just jaded. Life is terrible. I hate my life. Um, that's phase one. Phase two is my life sucks, where maybe everyone else is doing okay, but I'm crap because my life is terrible. Phase three is I'm great, and in parenthesis, kind of you're not, where someone can see the work that they're doing is really good, but they're just not involved in the group in the way they should be. They're not appreciating everybody the way they should be. And four and five are where it starts to get really interesting and really successful. So stage four, you'll hear people saying, we are great. So a team that's starting to have success as a tribe is going to start echoing that sentiment. Look what we did. Look how great this turned out. That's awesome. That's, what, that's when you know you're starting to see tribal success. And then finally, life's great. When you see teams that are not focused on beating other people or who are getting less competitive with each other, then you can see that they're really trying to focus on it, a greater good, a greater issue. They feel like they can do it. There's optimism abound. That's when you've reached stage five. Life's great. And if you get people to that stage, they're going to stick around forever because that's where people feel good and useful and valued and like they're really making a difference. And I've felt that in the Drupal community before. I felt that level of this could be so valuable for my life to just be involved in this and making a difference and pushing it forward and look how many people I'm helping. And this is what's great about open source. Anybody can feel this way. You just have to really get there through these stages. And not everyone starts at phase one, by the way. Most people start in phase three. I think it's like 50% of people in their workplace feel like they're in phase three. So you usually start somewhere in the middle and you have to build them up. And in that book, there's a tribal leadership. There's a lot of techniques for doing that. So you could read that book. I'm not going to outline it because we don't have time. Um, but there are some metrics that I want to cover here that I think are important for us to watch in addition to just language and how are we talking about our group and how are we talking about our accomplishments. So I think that we should be talking about people. How much do we want to grow? How much did we grow in terms of diversity of roles or the number of people actually contributing to this? We should talk about releases and the quality of our releases. Are they getting better? Are they getting faster? Are they getting more frequent? These are measurable, tangible things. And then finally, we can talk about morale. And that goes back to the language thing. How are we talking about this? How are people feeling about this? How are we gauging that? We can see that in language. We can see that in the number of people staying in the initiative. How long are they there? If they're there for years, obviously, you're doing something right <laughs> because they're sticking around. People are probably pretty happy with that. So those are tangible, measurable things. You can talk about these things. Here's some ideas for you. The number of non-dev uh, contributors. How are you growing that, and how are you fostering that to really form that group instead of a set of developers? Um, you can talk about average time on critical path. If someone's working on something, how long did it take? If it's taking years, something is very broken, in my opinion. You can talk about the number of thank yous that they got or gave. How are we communicating and contributing to our recognition? Uh, velocity or time to market of those releases, like I said, faster or better. Team growth year over year and the tribal leadership speech. So this is my recommendation for metrics that you should be looking at in these teams to find out if you're actually doing it right. Those are just ideas. You could do more, I'm sure. So I'm going to do some takeaways, and then we're going to do some Q&A. Takeaways. Um, I stole this from the book How to Be a Positive Leader by Jane Dutton and Gretchen Spritzer, which I really liked. It's called Give. First one is growth. Find people, 
not just developers, please. <laughs> Let's get some diversity in here. Let's really grow this community horizontally and vertically. Secondly, integrate. This goes back to culture. Make them feel welcome. Make them feel like they are really embraced, even if they don't know what this thingamabob is even called. You know, They're not dumb. They just haven't been around. They're not in your field. They probably have terms you don't know, so you know, let's give them a break. Virtuousness, they talked about this as being, um, you have this quality, when you feel like you are contributing back and making a difference, it makes you feel really good, like you're exemplifying a virtue, which can foster a lot more things, by the way. Um, so rewarding the right behaviors is really important to grow that V the, of virtuousness. Um, the E is for esteem. So thank you, thank you very much, all the time, very much, very loud when it's good. And there's one that I didn't put on here, which is you know, know when to sort of quash the bad behavior and do it in private, please. There's nothing worse for me than when someone comes up to you in front of a big group of your peers that you really respect and says, you did that so terribly and never touch it again. <laughs> No, this is a mentoring opportunity for you as a leader. Take them aside or take them in a private channel or whatever it is. Explain what happened, explain what you needed, and then give them a second chance to get it right if you can. That's much more effective. So that's give, and that's from the book. And the second half is more, and that's from me. Um, I think that we need to make a plan. I think that we need to organize better, give people the process that they need. I think we need to regulate communication. We need to have regular cadences for meetings. We need to have um, processes that are in place where we communicate effectively amongst different groups at different times who collaborate together. Let's actually make this teamwork. We need to also make people excited. I don't think that we do enough of that. I don't think that we think sometimes our idea is good. People will just come. That's not true. You have to give them something to feel excited about. That goes back to your elevator pitch. Get really good at that. Get really passionate about it, and people will come to you. It's just it takes an investment, and you have to be excited yourself. So those are my takeaways are give more <laughs> as an acronym. I hope that that helps you remember some of them, and fostering the right community, fostering the right processes, and really giving yourself a chance to grow a community outside of just development. So that's my session, and now we can get some ideas from you guys. Any questions or comments? Oh, come <laughs> thanks. I had one question about the dragons. Okay. Mm -hmm. My question was about the dragons. Mm -hmm. uh, you felt more hopeful for those that were in the top left of the quadrant. Sure. Um, in your quadrant of awesomeness. Oh, it's Angie um, and Dries's. It's not or <laughs> of Angie's, excuse me. Um, but do you feel that there's a path forward also for the dragons? Uh, you know, they've got the skills, but they lack maybe the empathy or the, you know. Yeah, they, they are skilled, but they are not good at communicating effectively. I absolutely do feel like there's a path forward for them. I would just limit how much we invest in that. So you'll know when you're trying to coach the person if they're coachable. And that's something that we need to identify early on. You can see it in the way that they communicate with other people and in the way that they communicate to your feedback. So if you, for example, see someone go into an issue queue and say, hey, that's a piece of crap. Don't put that in my queue <laughs> or something really inappropriate like that. Um, that would be an opportunity for you to slide into their DMs and say, hey there. I saw your comment. Do you think that we can take a second to talk about it? Don't just launch right into a response. First, make sure they're open to getting a response because you don't know what state of mind they're in. So with dragons, I feel like tread lightly and figure out what's actually going on, what's the context that they're in first. And then if they say, sure, yeah, let's talk about it, but next week because I'm going insane right now, you already learned something really valuable. If I was going to give them this feedback right now, they weren't even going to listen. So make sure that those ears are wide open. Call them next week, set up the time, and then say, so here was the behavior I noticed. You told someone their work was crap. This person was pretty new. Here's the impact. 
This person now feels like crap because you told them they were crap. <laughs> and the um, response. So what would have been really good is if you could have maybe said some constructive things about what they needed to work on. This is best done over the phone, by the way, if you can, or in video chat. Don't just DM it. Um, I need you to be more specific about the things they could have done better and why. Give them examples, contextual in the moment if possible. And please be nicer. We don't need to say words like you're crap or this is crap or whatever. Say, I think you can do better. Give them alternate language options that they can use. I think it's really important that we try and help those dragons become better because if they're really, really skilled, we don't want them to go away. We just want them to be nicer. We just want them to do a better job of talking to other people about how they can do better. They're actually not on that bad of a path if they're doing that because at least they're giving feedback. It's just really poorly executed, right? Uh, a worse situation would be someone who comes in and does something and just overwrites someone else's work and just leaves. They're like, man, this is terrible. I'm not even going to tell you why, or I'm not even going to say that it's terrible. I'm just going to overwrite it. Like, that's an insult on an engineering team, I think. Oh, I just worked on that for like two days, and you just overwrote it. Okay. <laughs> and then maybe there's like a war. <laughs> like, I'm going to put it back, and then I'm going to overwrite it again, and that just creates terrible feelings. So I think recognizing what a dragon is, someone who's giving feedback, poorly, and then giving them an opportunity to be coached if they're willing to be by assessing what is their state, when can I talk to them, how are they responding, and then giving them behavior, impact, response sort of approach. This is how you can do better. You want to coach them and be an example to them of how they can give constructive criticism to somebody in that moment. That's a really great way, I think, to show the dragons how to become in the upper right. Maybe we can pull them both from the upper left and the bottom right. That would be great. Good question, thanks. Anyone else have ideas around that too? You can share your ideas if you have them. No, nope, I'm the only one with an idea on that, okay. <laughs> Come on up. Um, I mean, all the advice you just gave was really good, so I couldn't add any more to that other than I particularly like the calling out the behavior, tagging the behavior as the bug rather than the person as the bug um, in those problematic uh, conversations. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. The question I had was, all of that is amazing, and I couldn't have said any of it better myself. Oh, stop. Go um, on. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what you would say to someone who says, that sounds great, and I could probably learn all those highly skilled, those very specialized skills, but how am I going to do all that and still maintain my project? The truth is, I don't think you can. I think that it's really hard for someone to code, 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 and foster the community and maintain all these conversations with dragons and people who need mentoring and all these things. Realistically, we only have, we have a finite amount of time so I think that if you have an idea, you're starting an initiative, your first order of business is make a team, period. Just assume you won't have time to do everything. I've seen it a bunch, and it's really hard when people try. They just end up burning themselves out because they're trying to find people, and they're trying to teach people, and they're trying to write things, and they're trying to deploy things, and then they're also like neck deep in issue queue comments, and geez, ugh. So I, um, I don't think it is possible. Does anyone think it's possible to do that on your own? Oh, I'm seeing a lot of heads shaking. We're all like, ugh. I'm seeing actually a lot of like faces of disgust right now. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> Everyone just went, ugh. Okay. Um, so does that answer your question? Okay, good. Okay, I'm asking for a friend. Oh, okay. <laughs> Note everyone, this is not his question. And of course, I, I can't reiterate enough that it, what a great presentation and thorough and detailed. Thanks. And, yeah. Although. Oh, so constructive think, criticism. I Here it comes. Think, I think there's a big assumption, mm -hmm. and that is that the leader has a team, the tribe leader has a team. Yeah, they have to how, grow one. <laughs> yeah. How do you recommend building your team, such as a local Drupal user group that mm -hmm. has attrition galore? Or say you're doing a startup and you're trying to find the right, you know, technical and business leads, and you okay. want to build a team. Do you have any go-to resources? 
Uh, there's a lot of things on the Googles about how to, how to grow uh, a group of people. I think the most effective ones are similar to what Joe Schindler put in his keynote. I would just echo kind of what he said. Um, make a space that's safe that people want to go to. If you're trying to grow a community or grow a group and you're all sort of in person, that's a great way. Have a place and a time. Make it regular. Make it recurring. Um, be very welcoming. Have that little kit that I mentioned around like having a really clear elevator pitch. This is what I'm trying to do. This is how I'm trying to do it. This is what I need. And this is where we're meeting to talk about it. If you can do that and be really regular and really positive and really um, grateful for the people who show up, like, oh, this is so great that you're here. Let's do this thing. Here's what we're doing this week and really bring them in. Um, I think that's really positive for them. And I think it makes them want to come back and do it again because they feel like they're making a difference and they get that sort of tribal spirit of like, we're in this together. Look what we can do. So that would be my, my recommendation. Anyone else have ideas? I feel like no one wants to share their ideas. Your ideas are welcome. <laughs> uh, hi. So, yeah, thanks for your talk. I wanted to clarify one thing. I think in the description you said that there's 30 hours left for the rules module. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we it's, could talk uh, about that. It's yeah. 300 hours that are left. Oh, oh, good. Um, Thank you for but, clarifying but that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Slight uh, nuance. It was only 10 times more. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, what I'm trying to do is like I'm I'm trying to to hand the initiative over or to onboard new people that will help out with the initiative. So mm -hmm. I think resonating well with the I need a team to <laughs> <laughs> um, to do that. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to 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 kind of build something new together with new people. I think are you gonna try some of this very, stuff? Very powerful concept. I, yeah, but like looking back at, I think it would have been nice if I applied similar concepts early on to, mm -hmm. to be able to kind of bounce back and forth in like, like circle the responsibility of running the initiative for distributing tasks better. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it will be a good opportunity to, to try concepts like this. Okay. Well, if you come up with some good ideas, mm -hmm. you could do a talk on it. <laughs> that would be, that's my suggestion to you. That's my ask. If it works and you get people to come and join your initiative and knock out those last 300 hours, not 30, um, then I think it would be a really positive thing for you to share with the community. And I'm going to come back to you and ask you how that's going there. <laughs> And with the rules initiative, I think that um, I'm going to pick on it a little bit because I think it's interesting. That's a really important one that we all really, 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 really care about. So when I saw that, that actually kind of inspired this. I was like, how is it possible that this super important thing is not getting attention? Because we all care and we all see the difference that it makes. So the vision shouldn't even be like that tricky to put together. seems like we need... Um, a clearer path to, to getting involved. The onboarding needs, I think, some work. That was just my observation there. Do you agree with that? Maybe you have your own thoughts on it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I think I agree. We can always do better in, for example, so at some point I think we ran out of the novice tasks and we had run like 20 sprints and um, wow. you know okay. like at some point you kind of only have initiative stagnates if if you have only the expert tasks left that you don't have the funding for right okay um, interesting so we didn't see the value anymore in in yeah in in keeping doing as we did because we wrote a lot of blog posts and we were presenting at Drupal camps uh, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. it and at DrupalCon. Um, yeah. Okay, so, that, so that, that I think was was the struggle that led to to to, the, to a drop off. To a drop off. Yeah. This is a really interesting point. One you can maybe experiment with and then put in your talk, um, which you're going to do now since I've decided. Um, you okay. could, for example, say the maturity sort of model for a tribe within the op Drupal open source community. Mm -hmm. Once you hit X number of sprints, then you need to start developing champions. 
who are going to be stable so that they can keep doing the long-term stuff. And you need to start announcing to the world that you are in phase two and now you've got stable people on the team and then maybe you're going to get into phase three later when you're starting to get mostly expert tasks and that's when you start going, fund me, fund me, fund me because we want to get to the end of our roadmap. We don't want to get stuck halfway through in phase two. We need so much funding to get into phase three and that means that we need X, Y, and Z people to be working on this for X number of hours per week. And then you start a funding campaign. So that would be an interesting theory that you could prove out is once you grow your teams to a certain level of maturity, starting out, stable people, and then needing to work only on expert things, being funded full time, that would be an interesting model to get feedback or examples on because that is a real challenge. Across the board, you're not the only one suffering from that. Mm. I think core has a lot of that. Okay, um, I think we're out of time. Six o'clock. So thank you everybody for coming at the end of the day. Oh, really appreciate it.